Good afternoon people, it's Monday, just about close of play, 4 o'clock, and I've got the, uh, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, the steel handle back on the, uh, on the welder, got all the side panels on, got the filler on the, uh, on the welder, I haven't rubbed it down yet, so we're really, we're really all done, and ready to turn the welder over to take those wheels off and put proper casters on it so that it sits lower down and uh, doesn't topple over like it does on that one so there we are I think that's about that's about done there everything's fitted back together well I need to put another cable on it I've noticed that the uh, the cable that I left on it, uh, it's good at the ends, but it's actually perished in the middle. The outer sheet is perished in the middle. Uh, and you don't want that on three-phase, so I'll put a new cable on it as well. But there we are, ready to turn it over. Do the underside. Tip it back onto its new casters and paint it. There's a bit more rubbing down on those side panels, but... I might take them off again and do them, but... I just put them on to protect the internals of the welder when I turn it over, so there you go. Right, it's time to pack away and go home. So, I'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye for now. Good lunchtime, people. It's Tuesday. And given that my brother's just passed on the way to go and get his lunch, we got hold of it and we hauled it onto its roof. And now I can get underneath to put the wonderful new casters on it and there they are four set of four 13 pounds including postage I don't think you can go wrong with that they really are they're 200 kilos a piece the double bearings in the wheels and ball bearings in there I really think they're a good value for money right but there we are I've got a set two now and cut all this horrible abortion off and cut that horrible abortion off and uh, decide how I'm going to put some proper wheels on it. So I'm going to crack on with that. I got it all cased up yesterday. And uh, it's the final frontier to get it painted before I get it painted. Get it back on its wheels today or tomorrow and then I can start to paint it. Okay, catch you later. Hello again, people. It's three o'clock, Tuesday afternoon. And all that junk is off. And believe you me, it weighs a ton. So, what is the plan? The plan is to put a piece of angle iron on there to carry the, uh, the gas bottle step. To put two struts from that bolt there down to carry the outer end of the gas bottle step. And then to put the casters somewhere here on this end so that they're outside but the first thing to do is to find a level where I can get the casters obviously I want to get as close to the ground as possible and those casters are quite large so uh, I just want to stop it being top heavy the transformers are actually bolted all bolted to this lot and they're very heavy indeed so we should be able to make it much more stable than it was right I'm gonna have a tidy up and then have a cup of tea and carry on. Catch you later. Hello again. There we are, there's two mounted. Now these are just mocked up uh, there to weld, but uh, that's how I'm gonna do it at the other end as well with uh, the wheels slightly over the other end so that it balances the gas bottle. So I do have a problem with my uh, TIG welder, when you put the gas bottle on the back, it uh, tips backwards very easily. So I've got some weight in the front at the moment, but I'm going to move, move two of the casters on that to more to the rear as well. Uh, funnily enough, that's another welder that's had a, a bottle step added after, uh, afterwards. It didn't come with a bottle step on. But uh, there you go, you can see I've just cut some angle iron. I'll need to pack those up slightly to get them uh, parallel so it steers straight but uh, very simple very straightforward and much much lighter 
with all that junk. Right, there we go. It's about close of play. It's about time to pack up and have a tidy up and a sweep up. All this muck on the floor. And then uh, I'm going home, so I'll see you tomorrow, people. Bye now. Hello, good people. It's Wednesday evening, close of play. I haven't got much done today because I've built another cold frame, the last one. But what we're doing here, basically, is we're going to weld, weld these up into a square frame to carry the gas bottle there. We're going to put a diagonal bar from that hole to there on either side, diagonally like that, to support the weight of the gas bottle, which I've done actually done the same job on the TIG. Uh, and then we're going to probably put a piece of box section underneath at the end and probably put a little uh, a couple of wood panels in. It's a big thick wood panel, you know, inch thick wood. I've got some some nice elm planks. They're old they're old pit boards actually. And uh, they make very good uh, strong hole fillers so I'll probably use them but as I say I haven't got much done today. I've got that bolt cut and bolted up and got those two pieces cut. Uh, the wheels at this end I'm gonna put like that, so that they just stand outboard of the uh, the welder proper, so that we don't get the overbalancing effect on the gas bottle. Now I don't know if we would with this welder because it's much heavier than the TIG, but I'm not going to risk it. Uh, although it's a lot lighter now, all that bloody junk's off. It's amazing how much that that class two weighs. Uh, but that's what I'm going to do. Put those wheels outboard like that, and. Uh, that should see it done, but I'm going to have to do that tomorrow because it's just about time to head, head home in the car. And I'll just show you what I've got in the back of the car. Yes, it's miserable, wet, and rainy today. There we go, the last cold frame. Right. The workshop. It stayed quite tidy today. I had a sweep up after all the wood shavings and everything. And uh, another little job I've just started to do was I was making a, a ring yesterday and I needed to heat a piece of metal up and I didn't want to light the forge just for one little piece of metal. So I thought well what I should really do is get this, uh, get this going. So I got the torch out, connected the air up and then I'm went to my box of regulators to uh, to get a regulator to, to suit for butane and for propane and <laughs> realised <coughs> that the torch, uh, the, the information they sent me back when they converted the torch to bottled gas uh, gave the pressure required for both of them, for both butane and propane, in millibars and the only regulators I have are old and are marked in inches water gauge. So I took the information home last night and did a quick calculation thanks to the internet. And this is what I've come up with. I don't think you can actually read that. I don't think you can actually read that. But I'll tell you what it says. Propane is 35 millibars or 14 water gauge. And butane is 28 millibars or 11 water gauge. Right, so there you go. If you get to needing a regulator and it's marked in uh, water gauge and you've only got millibars, that's your conversion factor. In fact, I've got it in here. Somewhere. To convert millibars to inches water gauge, you divide millibars by 2.488 to get inches water gauge. There you go. Anyway, I shall be getting on with that in the near future because that would have been really useful. But what I did find really, really useful was that if I turned the TIG up just a little bit, I could use the TIG like, uh, like an oxyacetylene torch and I got the ring of metal glowing really bright red hot in seconds. So there's plenty of power in a TIG torch 
to heat a piece of metal just to do a quick bit of blacksmithing, uh, which is which is much better than lighting your forge. I mean, if you're going to do a lot of it, you light your forge, obviously. But if you're not, you know, you just need a quick heat on one piece. If you've got a TIG, use a TIG. If not, use a brazing hearth. Okay, people. Catch you tomorrow. Bye for now. Hello again, folks. It's Thursday. Just going up to 2 o'clock. And uh, I've had another late start today because of other commitments. Uh, but it's taking shape. That's the gas bottle frame on the back. Uh, that's where I'm going to put the wheels. Uh, just to bring the centre of balance back a little bit to support the weight of the gas bottle because if you my uh, TIG welder has a three quarter size gas bottle on and I've had to put some weight in the front uh, to stop it tipping backwards because the three quarter size gas bottle is actually too heavy because the wheels are in here and not spaced out like these are so that's the job I'm going to have to do on that TIG welder because it's, uh, it's a bit unstable even with the weights in the front uh, but there we go, I'm now going to get some, get this horizontal and then make some struts from there to that bolt point there right and that at the same at the other side and that will uh, completely stiffen up the whole rig and then I've just got these two uh, here to weld but in order to weld them I'm going to have to take the sides off the welder uh, which I wanted to do anyway to clean the clean the top out and clean the inside out of anything that's tipped down there. I noticed already there's a little washer down there, so uh, I can get that out and clean the rest of the muck out. Uh, and also, I need to remove some stuff from behind this one. There's a long terminal block there which I'll have to remove uh, just to weld that. <coughs> but other than that, it's coming on well. We're surging forward. I'm now going to have a cup of tea and I'll bring you back when uh, I've done a bit more. See you later. And here we are. It's about 4.30, close of play. I've got the reinforcing bar. I've taken the sides off and cleaned the inside out. I've got the reinforcing bars on, which will transfer the load back to the top of the welder. Uh, casters are mounted. They're on, that's on and finished now. Uh, so that's okay. I've just got this end to weld up, which I'll do tomorrow. But I've got to take off. I've got to take off that terminal block up there because it's plastic, and I don't want to melt it. So I'm going to drop that off, move it out of the way, and then weld that to the top. And then I think that's about it for casters. So I've just had a good tidy up. The workshop's clean, and the floor's clean, and. I can come back to a nice tidy workshop tomorrow and tomorrow I'll try and get an early start and get it finished because tomorrow it will be ready to go back on its wheels and then we're ready for paint and Friday's come around again there you go people see you tomorrow, bye now hello people, it's Friday uh, it's pouring with rain outside and really dull and overcast I think we ought to nickname uh, this June, instead of Flaming June, I think it ought to be Dripping June. But uh, here you go, I'm making you dizzy, Annex. I'm walking around in circles like I usually do. Just a little thing. When you're MIG welding anything, grind the metal clean. It welds so much better when there's no rust on the metal. You can tack it together and bodge it together if it's rusty, but if you, if you clean it, it's so much easier to get good welds quickly. Now, I'm ready to weld up here. I've welded the nuts on the back of these so that I don't have any loose nuts. And I've welded a plate. Oh, I've put a plate in here with two nuts on for that side where I can't get into weld. Done the same at this side. I've moved the wiring away from the metal there. And in here at this side, I've taken that terminal block off just in case. So we're about ready to weld. Uh, and when I've welded all that up, I'm putting that piece into there just to weld between the wheels. This is probably a bit belt and braces, but you know what I'm like. Uh, it'll just stiffen the whole end up, uh, and it's probably totally unnecessary, but 
it won't bend. When that in, is in there, it won't bend. And then, it's ready to go back on its wheels. So I'm going to clean this out and just bang a bit of paint in it. Paint this underneath because I won't be able to get to it easily. And then it can go back on its wheels and its side panels can go back on. So there you go. So when I've got a bit more done, when I've got it all welded up, I'll bring you back and show you. Bye for now. And here it is, people, all welded up and cleaned up. Some of my welding is like bird shit, some of it's like rat shit, but it's strong. It won't go anywhere. So there we go. Right, I'm going to have a cup of tea now, and I'm going to get the uh, get all this underneath cleaned up and bang some paint on it. And then uh, bolt the wheels on, and we are ready to turn it back over. Although I'll put the... Uh, I'll put the terminals back first, put that terminal block back first when it's cooled down. I'm just going to have a cup of tea waiting for it to cool down because it's not, it's not quite cool yet. It's still a bit warm there. So I'll, I'll leave it until it's cooled off. Cup of tea time. See you later. There it is, folks. All finished, bolted up, coat of rust proof primer on the underneath. Got the terminal block back on and the wires back in place. And I'm just waiting for my brother to call up now and we're going to tip it back onto its wheels. And uh, that should be the job finished. Just to put back together and paint. Oh, I have some, some woods to cut for in the gas bottle. Uh, come, uh, gas bottle shelf. But other than that, I think that's it. Okay, catch you later. And there we go, folks. Close of play Friday. It's back on its wheels. It's much lower and more stable than it was before. Uh, it rolls around, as you might guess, really easy. And uh, I'm going to cut some wood to put in the gas bottle shelf. And uh, there's a there's a rig. There's this rig that goes on there that holds the gas bottle in. Do it with one handed, there we are. That goes on there to hold the gas bottle in. And there she is. So, I shall put it back together, paint it, and then give it a thorough test. But I think, to be honest, it's now a very usable and very useful machine, and it's compact. In fact, it's probably a little bit smaller probably a little bit smaller than my Max Arc. The lights come on and there's the Max Arc in the corner. It's a little bit shorter and probably a little bit narrower than the Max Arc. But there you go. That could do with a coat of paint to be honest. It's a wee bit rusty. But uh, that's a damn good machine. That's got three outputs on the choke uh, which I now understand thanks to uh, uh, a nice chap called Not A Normal Coder on the uh, MIG Welding website uh, forum, should I say and uh, also sussed the controls out for me and what everything did when I got this it had a faulty uh, wire speed control on it which is another rear stat type, the same as this soccer mate and uh, I got a new rear stat uh, for 55 quid I think it was which which wasn't expensive but it was beautifully made in India uh, it was a it was a straightforward copy of a British one but beautifully made in India with a little compartment on it with a spare carbon brush in it uh, amazing so there you go uh, the British equivalent was on back order and would have cost 95 quid so there you go so that's it chaps for this week I am uh, going to pack up and get on my way home but look what we have here we have got is it brown and is it brown and sharp or is it no it's jones and shipman jones and shipman of leicester england uh centers a set of centers and what can i do with a set of centers after i've given it a clean up because it's been stood in a dusty corner for ages i can put my new lathe parallel test bar in between the two centers which are on it and I can put a clock gauge on it and I can check the uh, center uh, check the test bar for uh, concentricity and see how 
uh, how good it is, see if it does meet the uh, less than two, uh, two tenths or less uh, spec that's on it. Because the first thing you need to know about any piece of test equipment is how accurate it is. Because if you're getting, you want, you want to know whether you're looking at an error in the machine uh, you're testing or a cumulative error uh, which is partly the test bar. So I shall be giving that, that will be going onto the hydraulic platform, up onto the bench on Monday morning and I shall be giving it a quick clean up, uh, run a stone down it just to check there's no burrs on it and uh, it could do with a coat of paint, it might even get one. Uh, but I'm going to put the uh, put the test bar in it and uh, check it out. So that's for next week. So I'll see you all next week. Stay safe people. Have a good weekend, like, subscribe, don't drink too much beer or wines and spirits and bye for now.